Now then everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this episode we're going to be working on this back panel again. We're actually going to finish off our lower cross member. Um, we probably aren't going to do the quarters, patching the quarters in, but I might show you how to do that anyway because uh, the reason we're not going to be doing them is because this arch point here on the, the internal arch is going to move back significantly. Um, so uh, I'm not going to bother patch that in. I might change my mind on that uh, and I'll explain why if I do. But for now, we're just going to ignore that. Um, but what we have to do, first of all, though, is before we uh, make this rear cross member, um, we have to patch this up because there's no point in doing all that work to then find out it's an awful lot of work to patch that in. Um, when I actually have this panel, brand new, it came with the car uh, in one of my storage areas. Um, it just seems a bit of a shame to take a brand new panel, chop it up to fit this when I could just patch this in, so that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, I can't see why I won't be able to, um, but you never know, something might bite me. Um, so first of all, like I said in the previous uh, previous video on this series, um, whenever you start working on rot, the first thing you should do is attack it and really take your anger out on it and uh, get a Y wheel on it with a grinder and rip into it. So let's uh, crack on and do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the uh, the rest of it as well. Once I've got the grinder out, I might as well for the sake of it. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the, uh, the back of the Neva again. And uh, like I say, I really hit it hard with the wire wheel. Um, no messing around. And what I normally try and do is I normally try and wire wheel it back to the point where the metal becomes shiny again. Um, normally, I like to cut past that point as well. So I'll, I'll cut at the point where the metal is shiny. That gets rid of any kind of corrosion whatsoever. Um, it's not always possible. So like here, for example, we've got a little bit of... Um, it's not pepper potting because pepper potting is where you can actually see the holes. Um, but it, it's a sort of got a bit of corrosion, surface corrosion, but it is fine. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to cut along this point here, um, and straight down basically, uh, cause it's not bad enough for me to have to warrant forming that panel there. Um, so it's only a little bit of surface rust. I'll just put a really good primer on it, um, just to stop it getting bad. Uh, and then, uh, obviously around these parts here. So we're going to make that panel there. Um, up here, there's a little bit of um, uh, surface corrosion again, but because it hasn't hold anywhere up here, so again, this is just going to be some really good quality primer, um, and then it'll be absolutely fine again. There's no holes at all. Um, where the the seal sits on this lip here uh, is quite badly corroded, um, so I'll I'll make that. But this actually looks like quite a straight panel, um, so it shouldn't be an issue at all making that really. Um, and then in this corner, somebody had uh, patched this bit in here with some uh, some fiberglass filler, which, uh, much like scotch blocks on electrical systems, is a crime punishable by a life term in sentence, if you ask me. Um, so that'll be sorted out at a later date, when I, probably when I replace this, this panel here, this whole uh, C-pillar panel. Um, so let's crack on with uh, making a template for this. So the mistake a lot of people make um, when they're when they're doing body work is, or one of the mistakes they make is they uh, they cut the rot out and then they make the panel fit the hole that they've made. Whereas what you should do, you should first make the panel, make the hole fit to the panel. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to make a template using some incredibly precise engineering material called an old pizza box uh, that will sit over here. Then I'll make the panel. And if I make the panel right, it'll just sit and it'll nestle nicely into its place. And then what I do is I actually scribe around the uh, the panel and that gives me my cut line. So then you cut that and the panel will just slot in nicely. You tack it in and it'll weld up lovely. And that's that's the best way of going about it. 
So I just uh, cut along our original fold line off our cardboard, um, so where the box was formed basically, I cut along that line. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a pair of more grips just to clamp it. I'm actually going to make this panel go right down to the bottom because the corrosion goes to about here. Might as well make it go down to the bottom. And I'm also going to make it uh, go full length so I can get rid of this uh, where the old bumper hole used to be. Um, so I can blend that really nicely. And it will look like it was never even there, that hole. So you just clamp that on there. And then... Clamp that there, just like so. And then we just run our finger along here, and that'll give us somewhat of a fold line. And then I tend to just run a marker along. Along there, like that. Get in there. So all we're doing is we're just putting pressure on just to, to highlight where our folds are. What I used to do um, when I, I used to do an awful lot of this, they used to use different colors. Um, so like purple in this case would be a fold. And then uh, here, this is going to be a cut. So I'd use a different color, like green or something like that, just to uh, show where the cuts and bends were. Because when you start making really complicated panels, um, it, it does start getting, like I say, complicated. What we might do actually is we're just going to go straight down here. So if this, um, I'll just fold this down. If this was a straight edge to a panel, like a sharp edge, it's not, it's a fold. So it's got like a, a one or two millimeter radius on it. But if it was like a sharp edge, as if, uh, it, it, like this gutter seal here, for example, it's got a real sharp edge. What you could use is you could just get your hammer and tap the cardboard along the edge there. And that'll actually cut the cardboard for you. That make that it, When you can do that, it makes life real quick. Um, but what I'm going to have to do is, uh, just going to have to mark it from the inside, our cut line. And then I'm just going to rub here because I can't get in there. There's a, there's a panel in the way. So I'm just going to rub and then mark that radius there. <clears throat> so what we're doing at the moment is we've just marked out roughly uh, to give us an idea of uh, where, um, where we're going to cut. Then we'll put it back on again and uh, and neaten that cut up, trim it up. I'm also going to mark, make a reference point here and here. So when we come to put it back on, we know where it needs to go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to taper off at an angle. So I want to mark where that corner is down here. Take it off. Right. We're just going to cut along now. Yeah, that'll do it, yeah. I'm just going to cut straight across for now. Yeah. And that's going to get thrown away for the next project. Sit this back on here just to have an eyeball. I'm past my rot point, you see. I'm past any kind of surface corrosion. Because this has got a big hole here, I'm working past to the shiny metal. Yeah, so even this bit here that's got like sort of surface corrosion because i'm replacing this anyway i might as well chop it all out and that's 100 percent going to make it last a lot longer than uh if we uh just work to our bare minimum so it's in there lovely it's 
double checking my markings, making sure I'm happy, which I am. Put along this line here. Back on. Every time I do a cut, for the sake of it, uh, I might as well um, sit it on the back on the car just to double check that I'm happy with everything, which I am so far. Yep. I'm liking it. It's looking good. Just mark this here. Mark that point there. There's, a, there's like a pressing here, so if I could take it across there, that'll make my life a lot easier. Cut along these lines here. Looking good. That's tip top, that is. That's absolutely... I'm happy as Larry with that. Excellent. Going to trim that up a little bit there. So this is quite solid here, but where where this uh, screw hole is here, it's rotten out here. I'm I'm just wondering about how to go about doing that. Um, I think I might weld along this this corner here, um, but then put this flanged edge on here. So what I'll do is I'll write plus five on this edge. Right, plus five there, and that tells me when I come to marking my sheet metal out that I've actually got to mark five millimeters in that direction. Um, and then I'll be able to put that fold on afterwards. Uh, and I might also, I'll just write invert there, just as a note, a little arrow. And then that tells me that actually needs inverting because i might even try forming that to make this shape here um just because that is rotten out there just for peace of mind really yeah it is it's rotten out we'll see if we can make that it's no big deal if not because um they actually fit very well these lights um so even if we don't have that third screw uh, fourth screw, sorry. <clears throat> it'll uh, it'll work a lot better. Um, well, it, it won't work a lot better, but uh, it'll uh, it'll sit nicely anyway. I do. Uh, I snapped one of these bolts. In fact, it was this bolt. I snapped it, taking the light out. I do have a spare uh, light cluster at my mum and dad's. Um, I'm hoping it is the left one. It'll be good if it is. Right. Let's. Uh, yeah, if we sit that on there now, jobs are good. We can um, mark that out onto some sheet metal now, <coughs> sheet, sheet metal, and uh, take it away. Jobs are good. We'll just mark where this joggled edge finishes. Got a bit of a joggled edge there, which will be easy for us to form. That's no big deal at all. Um, I just marked where it's going to end there. All right, let's go and... Uh, transfer our template onto some uh, sheet metal. All right, here we are back in the garage. Um, I've just got an off cut of sheet metal. This is 1.2 millimeters. Um, it's it's not essential, but it is recommended with bodywork to use uh, a slightly thicker material. So ladders are roughly one millimeter. Um, it's recommended to use a slightly thicker material um, than the factory, because what that does is it minimizes distortion. If you use like a 1.2 millimeter, to repair rot when you come to welding it in it won't distort as badly as if you use the same material size uh, thickness sorry as the uh, the factory so normally what i like to use is i like to use a speaker magnet which would sit on top of here and just hold this cardboard in place annoyingly i don't have any speaker magnets um i used to but i don't know where they've all gone so all i do or all i'm going to do now is i'm just going to use a couple of pairs of mole grips again just to hold this in place. Uh, I'm going to use a scribe, but you could actually. Uh, I don't have a. Oh, I do have a pen. Mm, I am tempted. No, I'm just going to use a scribe, and uh, I'm just going to run a scribe along this sheet, along my template, like that, just dragging it along.
my uh, my sheet metal. Let's see if I can show you this. My sheet metal is um, slightly bigger than my template. Now, some people might think, "Oh, I'm just going to cut along there." But what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to leave it, um, and then if I need to, I can get rid of that material afterwards. It's easy to take material off and add it on. And then to mark where my folds are, I'm actually going to use a centre punch and a hammer. And I just sent a punch where the fold is going to be at each end. What that does is that gets rid of the issue of this. If we scribed here at the end and then we cut it out, we've lost our scribe mark. We use a center punch. It's a small marking, number one, so it's easy to hide. And number two, uh, it er eradicates that issue of us losing our mark once we've cut all this out. <laughs> Don't know if you can see that. So now all I've got to do is I've just got to put that five millimeter marking slightly further in and look at inverting this shape here. To add the five millimeter mark, I'm literally just going to use a ruler, nothing fancy. Put it on my line, mark the five millimeter. I'm going to use an arrow, always use an arrow, what's called a tail actually. Uh, no, it's not, it's called a flag. You call it a flag in uh, fabrication. So if you use a flag, if you just use a line, a standard line, see if I can get this light again, if you just used one line, uh, for example here, you wouldn't know which end of the line, whereas if you use what's called a flag, which is basically an arrow, you always know it's that point that you're working to. And then our inverted part, um, where our wing, uh, where our hole is, uh, comes in 18 millimetres. So we need to measure 18 millimetres from our original line because that's our fold line. Like so. Same up here. <clears throat> and then if we use our actual template, we can use the radius off this. If we flip it back around, back on itself and that's the radius here so that's our marking out there and again we're going to add five millimeters onto that there we go i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that very clearly there you go that's that's our our little tab where our bolt hole is going to go through uh, and this is actually going to be folded over this section here and then it carries around there as well. So all this S-shaped part here is going to be folded. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plasma cut that out. So when it comes to plasma cutting, the, there's a bit of a gray area about you know what settings should you use. Um, and something I've never concerned myself with is settings on a plasma cutter. It's only when you start getting to CNC machines, really, where I'd start concerning myself with the settings. Um, when it comes to freehand, all I do is I just crank the plasma cutter on whack it right up and adjust my speed to the material thickness. Um, now, a lot of that's to do with the fact that I've got quite a bit of experience and I can do quite neat straight cuts with it. Um, but as long as your speed is correct, you won't have any issues with having to mess with settings. So, right, let's crack on. Right, that's it, cut. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to clean that up with a flat disc on a grinder and uh, then we're on to actually forming it, bending and cutting it. There we have it. I went a bit skew if up here, but it's no big deal. We can live with that. Happy days. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to scotch bright this. I'm going to uh, scotch bright it and what that does, it pr pr provides, uh, uh, it puts a key on our panel ready for painting. It's much easier to put a key on the panel when it's flat than when it's uh, all folded and shaped. All right, so here we are, at the mighty 3-in-1 press by Clark. Uh, this thing has got to be uh, one of the best investments you can make in your little workshop. Um, it is an amateur's tool, basically. 
Um, but it is the handiest thing, and it's it's reasonable priced. Um, but it is the handiest thing you'll come across. The only bit that I don't use is underneath this cover here. You got your, your three rolls. Uh, I don't use that because uh, I'm used to using um, in like real professional quality ones, and they're just a bit of a waste of time to be honest. Um, so, but the the press break and the guillotine um, once they're adjusted correctly are fantastic. Uh, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bend these panels, these two folds here. Um, the main thing I would note about this is make sure you bend them the right way because you will not be happy if you bend it the wrong way. Uh, ask me how many times I've done that in the past. And then you have to either remake the panel from scratch or flatten it all out again to refold it. So it's, it, it's self-explanatory, this. Um, you put your material in. Line it up with the bottom tooth, bottom of the tooth. And then bend it. Now, I'm just going to do it bit by bit and then take it out to the car uh, and test fit it um, and then see if I'm happy with it. And then once I am, I spin it upside down and I bend it the other way. And I can't believe it, but I nailed it first time. So uh, on to the next one. Uh, I've line my center points up uh, that, I, that I knocked into it. If you can see, and there's, there's just one there. Um, and it's a little bit out, so I'm, I'm just going to eyeball it and uh, get it roughly somewhere where I'm happy with it. Uh, I think that actually needs to go quite far, if I remember right. All right, let's go try that. All right, so that our panel, uh, it's fitting all right. It's not too bad. Needs a little bit of massage, and I've realised that this this internal corner here is actually a radius. So I'm going to have to put this on the uh, on that dolly that we made the um, jerry can holder with, just to put a bit of a rounded radius on it, um, and then it'll fit much better. Um, but other than that, it's going very well. I'm happy with it. Um, it's a little bit low just here. Again, no big issue. We can mark that uh, before we fit this. Mark it there. And then weld the whole thing in after we've cut the hole out. And then we'll get a ruler and we'll put it along the width of it, scribe it, and blend that in. And it'll work really nicely like that. <clears throat> so now, all we're going to do is, uh, like I just said, we're going to put a rounded radius on our internal corner. And we'll actually start flanging these edges over as well. So we're over at the, uh, the vise now. And uh, we're just going to manipulate this into shape basically um we're going to use the the jaw of the vice as a as a, a break point basically so we line our scribe mark up on our vice like so clamp it tight and then we just bend it uh, we'll use the proper tool for the job plenishing hammer just uh, scrape that clean with a bit of a ruler. There we go. The smoother this surface is, the better the outcome of your, your work will be. And then we go down to our next line. In fact, I'll tell you what, no, we want. <clears throat> We're actually going to hammer this whole job down. Get in there. It's just a case of taking your time and uh, enjoying it, basically. You know, if you're not enjoying it, then uh, you know you're doing something wrong. You just need to take a step back and figure out what you're doing wrong. Now, sometimes you're not enjoying it because you don't have the time to be doing it, but. Uh, I'm a bit like that, but I, you know, I, I've come to appreciate the fact that I've got too many projects, but they'll get done in due time. <clears throat> the one that upsets me most is this bloody Merc in the background. It's just sat there waiting. It deserves a lot more than to be sat there. But when I get a workshop up, 
that'll be the one that I just start to just enjoy tinkering with and perfecting. We might just use the ball peen on that just to get that corner around. Looks like it's about right. Yeah, that job's a good one. In an ideal world, all these surfaces I'm using at the moment will be polished smooth. Um, because any, any surface marring that's on these will get transferred onto our sheet metal. Um, so when, I, when I'm working on the Mercedes, for example, in the future, I will have really nice polished surfaces. But like I say, because this is going to be used for off-roading, um, it's going to get beaten up anyway. So Right, then we got our dolly. Put that on here, like so. It's the internal radius. I'm going to use the, uh, the wooden doming mallet um, because it will... Uh, provide a much better finish. There we go. How's that looking? It's looking all right, isn't it? Let's go test fit it. All right, let's see how this fits. She's looking pretty good, to be honest. Um, now, if we, if we, again, if we were on about like being concourse and everything being perfect uh we'd want this to fit so you see like how i'm having to press this in to get it to fit and, and form because this will have a radius a gradual radius on it um what we'd have to do is we'd have to start shrinking stretching english wheeling stuff like that to get that we wouldn't want to if we were after a concourse we wouldn't want to have to press this in place this should just sit like that and be absolutely perfect now there's a if we if we push in the middle there that's about right on this side, but there is an opening. It starts to gradually open out here. So we'd actually have to start forming that on that end. Um, now, what we do have to do now is we have to put our joggled edge on. So that's where it starts. And I'm just going to use my pen to make a very precise mark for how deep it goes. It's about, about that deep, actually. It's about spot on. So if we... There we go. So I'm just going to take that to the vise again. Just do exactly what I did with this bit here, basically, and just tap it down, start forming it down. Spawn. Absolutely. Tip top. Very happy with that. I'm a happy chap. Lovely. Right. It's time to scribe around it and uh, cut that rot out. So we're back at the car. And uh, this isn't essential. In fact, I hardly ever do this. It's just because I had to drag the world around and everything that I did it. But I've sprayed this in blue or any kind of colour. You could use any kind of colour. It's just because I've got loads of this blue paint lying around. Um, I've got given a load of it. So, um, And what that does is I want to bang this on here now. Clamp it in place, just like we did with our cardboard template. Hey presto. Now we're just going to scribe it and it just gives us a real clear line with that bit of paint on there. And I'm just going to scribe the bottom of this panel here. I'll put my little flag and then we'll be able to take a straight edge over to this side because this side's perfectly flush. So. Jobs are good one. We've actually timed that perfectly because this has actually got a joggled edge to where this light is here. Uh, it's got a joggled edge, and by the time we get to here, that joggled edge has just faded out, so we've timed it perfectly for our angled cut. Uh, we might just have to get a, a dolly, or maybe even just cut this back a little bit. Um, what do I think? What do I think? Yeah, I think I'm actually going to dolly that over. I'm going to round that edge over. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so let's uh, let's get cutting. <laughs> 
Let's try it, see what it's like. Look at that. Bloody hell. Anybody think I've done it before? Not bad at all. We're getting there. Ever so gradually. Right, I'm just going to go and uh, round this over. I'll take the camera with me. I'm just going to round it over. And then uh, we might just have to remark it just to get around that bend there. Just rounded that edge over. Right, we're ready for uh, cleaning this paint off and welding her in. So just get a wire wheel on and uh, clean all that paint off with wire wheel. So uh, when it comes to body work, one of the things I always like to tell people is to get a pair of pipe pliers um, because pipe pliers as daft as this sounds, uh, one of the best tools you will have for sheet metal work. The reason being, you can use them for flanging, straightening panels out, removing distortion, uh, squeezing bits together. So if this was like a a, a, um, a, a lap joint, you could squeeze them two together and then tack it. Um, all sorts. So, you know, everybody, everybody gets like them wide-jawed um, pliers, which is which is good. Yeah, that they are handy, but they're not essential, whereas these can be used for so much. So I always like to have a pair of these lying around. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this slight joggling out of this panel here. Just just by gripping them and prying out. There we go. Like I say, one of, one of the best bits of tooling you can uh, you can probably get to be honest for sheet metal work so square that cut up. test fit my panel again that's better it's much better lovely everything fits like a charm smashing right let's uh it's time for the fun bit the welding up with the bowly uranus 2000 smc as provided by rambaldini welding services all right, let's get this tacked in place. Now, it did spring. I saw it spring when I cut this panel out. So uh, we're going to have to do a bit of massaging uh, to get her all lined in, lined up and in, uh, in place. But uh, it's no big deal. Yeah, that's one tack on. Let's get cutting disc on that. Just cut that back a bit. Lovely. Oh. Jobs are good.
Let's go get plenty, you know what? What do you reckon? I'm reckoning that's looking pretty freaking good, to be honest. Oh. Right, before we get too carried away, let's just test fit the light, see if it uh, sits in there nicely. Yeah, she fits all right. It's just where that uh, recess is there. Because I haven't drilled the hole out. It's still got the stud in from where I snapped it off. So, jobs are good. I'm happy with it. Let's weld her up. A little bit of a where where I've bent it. This is quite common with the uh, little press brakes. Where I bent it, it's just kinked out a little bit. So I'm just going to tap that. And it'll just take that kink out. Post flow and pre flow setup is really good. I'm enjoying it because what what used to happen on on my old welders, uh, well, me and my dad always shared welders. So on our old welders was um, the the gas would cut off as soon as you let go of the trigger, no gas. Whereas this has got pre and post flow, so there's a constant gas flow protecting that, and it makes a much better weld finish. You know, I'm only running CO2, so the weld finish will never be brilliant. But it's a lot better than the, the old welders I used to run. Look at that, bloody hell. You'd think I'd done it before. All right, time for a flap disc and the blender in. So the uh, the, back, the camera went flat at this stage, uh, halfway through grinding that down, but I think you got the idea. Um, and then I decided to put the camera back on charge whilst recording, and at that point it decided to stop recording my voice. Uh, so I'm now doing a voiceover again. Um, but basically, uh, I was really happy with how this went. There's basically no distortion, essentially. Um, there's a tiny, tiny little bit where that bottom right is, that weld there. Um, but by the time uh, I... Uh, 
I get this rear cross member done, I think that will sort itself out, essentially. Um, so it's gone really well. Uh, still got to drill that hole where the uh, where the light uh, bolts on, um, but that's about it, really. Um, I can get away without any body filler, essentially, on this rear cross member, which I'm very, very happy about because um, I don't want any body filler, ideally, on this rear cross member because I'm going to be dropping off ledges and backing into stuff and stuff like that. Any, any body filler that's going to be there is, uh, is going to smash and, and break off, so we don't want body filler here. Um, the uh, the rear light, I actually, um, while I was uh, waiting for the camera to charge up, I decided to have a look at the rear light and see if I could sort that stud that I snapped out. Um, and all I did was I just got a, a, a drift and drifted it from the inside. They're, uh, they're like, um, uh, uh, like a splined stud, basically. So I just drifted it from, uh, from this side that you're looking at now. And uh, it took a, a, a quite a harsh tap. Um, I was a bit worried about damaging the light unit. Um, but it, it did just drift straight out. So now all I'll do is um, I'll just use a, a standard screw and make it so you have to take the, the lens off basically to be able to get that bolt undone. I prefer that. You know, if I snap, if I snap a, a bolt in future, I could just replace it with a bolt, whereas the studs, um, if you snap one of them, you've got to uh, either find another stud or do exactly what I've done now and replace it with a bolt. <clears throat> Uh, test fitted it and it fits like a glove. Um, it really fits very well indeed. Uh, and I also put the, the number plate light on alongside it and that fits uh, spot on as well. Um, so overall, the, the job's gone brilliant. And then it was uh, time to lash some primer on. Uh, two different cans, if you notice, the shades are different. And then some top coat on top of that. Never uh, just uh, lash your primer on uh you should always use a top coat as well because uh, primers are actually hydroscopic. Not a lot of people realise that they absorb moisture out of the air. Most primers are anyway. Right, that's uh, that's it done. I'm very happy with it. Um, I don't even think it's going to need any body filler, uh, which because this is the rear cross member, even though I bobtailed it, um, I'm going to be really happy if I don't use any body filler in this because this will be getting a lot of grief. Um, you know, I'll be dropping off ledges and stuff like that and impacts into the bottom of it backing into stuff i mean i'm an expert driver so i won't be backing into stuff obviously um but yeah this if i can get away with no body filler on this rear cross member um then i'm a happy chap um i was going to show you this but it's getting very dark now um so i'm i'm happy to wait for this paint to dry it's still a bit damp um but i haven't put this hole in this panel yet to where the light bolts through uh, and that's because i'm going to put the light cluster in and use the three nuts uh to hold it in place and then i'll just put the scribe through the hole just to scribe it so that when i take this light off at a later date i can just drill the the hole out um and that'll sort that out um the only bit really that gives it away that this is a uh, a repair um is the fact that this corner here where the, where the hole is meant to be uh, i haven't rolled over the edge of the panel um and that might actually happen at a later date. So when I take this light off in future and strip it all back down to bare metal again, I might actually just get a hammer and dolly and just roll that over. And then I genuinely don't think you'd be able to tell uh, that this is being repaired. But like I say, I'm, uh, I'm chuffed to bits with it. I think it's, uh, it's gone very well, very well indeed. Um, very little distortion. So uh, tomorrow's job, uh, we are going to be finishing off this rear cross member. Um, I'm actually going to be putting a hitch receiver into the cross member as well because at a later date I'd like to build a, an off-road trailer to go behind this um, so that if I'm like traveling through uh, the UK and Europe um, I can have my trailer tent, uh, my roof tent on the on the back of the trailer um, and all my supplies in it. Um, so that's, that's tomorrow's job. Uh, that's also going to be built into the chassis as well so I'm going to integrate that into the chassis so that all the, the towing force is going through the chassis not just a rear cross member. Um, so uh, if you like what you've seen, please uh, like, share, uh, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. It's very much appreciated. Um, and until the next one, cheers for now.